So they've crossed the ravine and Mm -hmm. they're in the garden and we have Mm -hmm. Judas who's bringing with him this whole Roman cohort. How many, how many soldiers do you think that was? So I looked it up and a Roman, a Roman cohort is somewhere around 500 people, (laughs) 500 men. Uh, It's like, (laughs) what? Yeah. Okay. I bet they did hear them coming. Right. I mean, yeah, I never knew that. And it definitely feels, it feels like, uh, that escalated quickly. Why do you have 500 Roman soldiers? coming up to this guy like what it feels Why? like does it feel like overkill right like oh no, completely well and like especially because jesus is stepping out like who are you looking for <laughs> right but I, i'm um, gonna go with you <laughs> exactly so he's got all these roman soldiers mm-hmm. and then also he's got um officers from the chief priests mm-hmm. and the pharisees who are these yeah. guys those are the guys who there's, there's the, the temple officers actually have authority to have officers to enforce the Levitical law. <laughs> and so not only do we have a, uh, a Gentile authority, Romans, we have the Jewish authority saying you've broken our laws and now we're going to enforce it. So Judas has managed to bring two big authorities into this scenario to, to betray Jesus, to take him out. Wow. He has really rounded up some, yeah, some, that's a, power. that's a big angry mob. That's exactly. a lot of people. Exactly. And they've yeah. come with lanterns, torches, and weapons. What do you, what do you see in those details? I literally you think of beauty. I think of beauty and the beast, you know, they're like grabbing <laughs> their pitchforks and their hoes. And like, We're going to go get the beast. I mean, it feel it's yeah. quite literally that it's like, We've got lanterns and torches. We'll light things on fire if we need to. And what like weapons, John, John, again, and purposely does not include this. All the other gospels show Jesus's remark that he's like, why, why did you come at me with Uh weapons? I was literally teaching in the temple a few days ago. You could have done it then. And John doesn't include Jesus's remark on that. I think I'm, I'm making an assumption that Jesus is trying to let you know how absurd like how the balance of power is wildly unjust that yeah. you have hundreds of authorities and soldiers against Jesus. Who's like, this is uncalled for. Right. And I'm just thinking, you know, if you've got lanterns, lanterns light up a big area a torch, you can go in and look behind bushes and whatever mm-hmm. and weapons. I mean, they're when you're, when you're rounding up that sort of, you know, battalion and this sort of, these sort of tools, you're looking for a fugitive who's going to fight back. And, and that's not what they, that's not what they, that's not what he does. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So verse four says, Jesus, therefore knowing all the things that were coming upon him came out into the open. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Nasby says, yeah, I just love that. What do you see there? Oh, uh, I to- I mean, uh, just for the phrase alone, knowing all the things that were to come upon him. I kind of think, did Jesus start the, all the things thing? you know, everybody says all the things, <laughs> all the things, <laughs> all the things. I <laughs> love all the, that's my favorite <laughs> meme with that funny written guy and all the things. All the things. Um, I, cause I read it and it was like, do you mean all the things like, like, like crucifixion, like being, uh, tortured, like all the things, all the things. And John's and phrasing is, yeah, all the things, all the things that were about to come upon him. He came out in the open. And that's, that was the phrase that made me cue into Adam. Like, just like you're saying, suffering unjustly for things he did not deserve. He came out in the open. (laughs) Right. And he, he was not passive. He, he, He wasn't, um, he wasn't hiding and mm-hmm. nor was he passive. He's actually taking initiative here, right? He's coming toward his captors, right? Showing that, I mean, you know, you look at the story and open theists would say that Jesus just walked into a trap, right? They would say he didn't know he wasn't mm-hmm. aware. That's just, to me, that just seems ludicrous because he is either a complete fool walking into a trap mm-hmm. or he is completely in control. And everything points to the latter, that he is completely yeah. in control, yeah. taking initiative here. Yeah. Um, and I, I also think it's kind of astonishing that they answer him <laughs> because he's like, he says, you know, he comes out into the open and says, whom are you seeking? 
and they answer him, Jesus, the Nazarene. So, I mean, does that mean they don't recognize him Right? <laughs> or they weren't Did, expecting this? Were you coming here looking for someone else or maybe he doesn't look like what you didn't know what he looked like before you came out here. You don't know. Yeah. Um, I thought that too. First, Jesus, even in him just asking the question, it's, it's coming, it's taking initiative on something that's like, who are you looking for knowing it's uh-huh. itself yeah and then for them to respond uh well we need jesus the nazarene <laughs> it's like so bizarre like what fugitive is like who are you guys looking for and then they go you <laughs> uh-huh. yeah right right well and so i don't know whether they didn't recognize him or they did but that that phrase jesus the nazarene that isn't the most honoring way to speak of him right they don't call yeah. him the teacher or the rabbi they're like no this guy from nazareth that's what the yeah. the demons when uh i think the when the demons oh, wow. respond in one of uh-huh. the stories about the demons they call him jesus of nazareth or jesus the nazarene mm. um and so this is a this is kind of a, a lower way to refer mm-hmm. to him mm-hmm. um and and how does jesus respond then when they say, oh, who are you looking for? Jesus, the Nazarene. How does Jesus respond? He actually says, I am <laughs> just amazing. The NASB inserts he, so we can understand it, but yeah. the literal wording is I am, <laughs> I <laughs> which am. is so John, because John is the one who includes all the I am statements about Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the way I am the truth. I am the I am. And before Abraham was, I am. And now here he is again, Jesus, the Nazarene, the guy from the small town who we don't like. I am. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of got a double meaning there, doesn't it? Yeah. You've just yeah. called him Jesus, the, you know, the, the guy from this little dinky town, this nobody I am him, but I am the great, I am like, that's uh-huh. the, that's the term too, that, um, with Moses and the burning bush, mm-hmm. that's what God used. Yes. He said, I am. So this is a big, this is, those it's are two the, big words. It's the same phrase he got in trouble for when he said, I tell you the truth before Abraham was, I am. It's the same. He just said, I am. And that's the, he got in big trouble before for saying that. Yeah. And they wanted to kill him right after, yeah. after he said that. So, all right. And then what happens after he says, I am. This is wild to me. I literally wrote in my notes, what is happening right now? Cause he, that he says, I am he, and then they drew back and they fell to the ground. Right. And I was like, what? What? Why? What happened? And I, it is, was mystified. It was amazing to me. It's astonishing. And this is not just a couple soldiers. No. I mean, we're picturing like could be five. I, I think I read somewhere it could have been up to a thousand, but at least yeah. 200, at right? least a few hundred soldiers. And they've got their armor, whatever. And I mean, what do you think it sounded like with all it says? I mean, you ha- have to hear fell. it go like clonk, 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 yeah. clonk. Like it has to have some sound that shields and spears are going down i mean what in the world and i just this is one of the things that i wonder why did none of the other gospel writers Mm, include this detail you know why did only john i wonder if there was some i mean this is just me speculating and i have not heard anybody else say this but i wonder if you know they just didn't want to avoid uh, people being upset by things being included in their writing, but now so much time has gone by that John feels comfortable. I mean, this is a whole army of soldiers. You don't want to mess with a whole army and they probably do not like the fact that they all fell down. That does not make them look very soldierly. Does it? (laughs) I know. I'm like, was this like, was this somewhat involuntary? Like something happened and you were forced to bow or was something about what Jesus said so compelling that even they were like, I, okay, I don't know who I'm dealing with here, but I can't do this like normal but something was obviously happening that is that is supernatural that's beyond normal human interaction right and john was like you need to know about this yes and either one of those i think would be supernatural Mm -hmm. that they that if they just fell back involuntarily i mean obviously that's supernatural i could kind of tend to think it it that way but Uh even if it's just they they suddenly have this like oh man this is like this is a powerful person yeah. and we need to take a step back and maybe there's this domino effect. Like they're all falling all over each other, but right. just, I mean, all he said was two words. I am. 
-hmm. and that that would be strike terror in their hearts. I mean, that's astonishing either way. But what I noticed too, is that they, they fall back, Mm -hmm. you know, we fall forward in worship. They were falling back in fear and intimidation. We fall forward when, when we want to be undone, you know, when we're undone by God and his majesty, we fall back when we're overcome by some power. And so there, and, and obviously they, even though they fall down, they get back up and they arrest the guy. Right. So it's not, they are not overcome by God's right. Amazing. And I was talking to my husband about this earlier. He said, what I think is astonishing is they didn't just say, all right, I'm out. You know, if, if you were in that situation, I mean, you would think that there would be some soldiers who would say like, like we see the centurions say at the foot of the cross, surely this was the son of God. You know, you would think they would notice and be like, I'm, you know, I'm on his side (laughs) or at least Judas Judas cross. Like, okay, I've made a terrible mistake here. They don't, they don't. And Jesus asks them again, who are you seeking? Mm -hmm. And again, they say, same words, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus, the Nazarene. I wonder too, so many times in John, um, John, as he's writing is it, when he writes these stories, he's making you as the reader do the same thing that characters are participating. He's sort of forcing you in a decision. He says that about his book. I want to write this so you can believe. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if even in the question, whom are you seeking? It could have just been like, who are you looking for? But I, sometimes with his questions, Jesus is like, it's like a double meaning uh like are you looking for me <laughs> do you want me mm. <laughs> and and then obviously that the answer, the answer for that side is is no we're not seeking for you that way but i wondered a little bit in and how the question itself was phrased mm. as jesus put it out there whom are you seeking who are you who are you looking for in a much bigger more existential way and oh, uh you see this partic- this this group is not queuing up on who they're actually looking for. Um, but that's I wonder very, that very compelling because for the disciples who like, you just put them on different sides for the disciples mm-hmm. who are with right. Jesus. They're like, we're yeah. with you to the end. We have, we've bent the knee to you, Jesus, you are right. our Messiah and yeah. these others. So they're being sought by Jesus. They're being, mm-hmm. They're, they're following him. And so the soldiers, who are you seeking? They're not seeking a Messiah. They're seeking Mm -mm. a captor, something else. And neither is Judas. I, this is back to Judas, but the, in John's narrative, the last time we saw Judas was in John 13. And it's when Jesus shares the bread, but still nobody, still nobody picks up on it. And then he tells Judas, go ahead and go. Uh, And then Judas goes and it says Judas left and it was night. It's the last thing we hear about Judas in John 13. Mm -hmm. And then this is where we see him next, betraying Jesus and now standing physically on the side of the Roman cohort. And I feel like narratively with John, John is letting you know, like Judas has chosen a side and that's his side in the night. And we all choose a side, don't we? Yeah. We are. And we're either on the side of like the captors, like I've got to put him in his place or yeah on the side of his disciples where he is my Lord. And I bend my knee to him. Yeah. We all choose the side and we can't, nobody's in the middle. We yeah. can't, we can't, yeah. that's not an option. Yeah. So, yeah. So Jesus gives them another chance. Mm-hmm. Um, who are you looking for? He told them I am he. Mm-hmm. So if you're seeking mm-hmm. me, if you're seeking me, let these men go on their way. Mm-hmm. And, oh, isn't that just beautiful? Jesus yeah. is, he's, uh, you know, I just picture he's so noble. He's so honorable yeah. here. He's mm-hmm. like, if you're looking for me, those who are on my side, those who are standing with mm-hmm. me, let them, let them go. What do you see astonishing let there, Lindsay? I see it's astonishing that what, that he is, uh, in this situation, he is protecting them, right? Like eventually all these men will be martyred and we know that, but in this moment, this is not that moment. And so Jesus is, saying, let them go because you're here for me. And like, what an incredible, kind, protective move uh, for Jesus to do that. I would imagine that that if I put myself there, this is my worst nightmare. 
this is the thing that I've been trying to avoid with Jesus for the last two or three years that I didn't want to happen. Well, and protect um, him from, right? They wanted to right. protect him from this. Yeah. It's all, and it's, it's like, like this, is, this is not what we wanted. This is not, we were not wanting to do this. Jesus didn't even want to go to Jerusalem right now. Yeah. Uh, and now it's happening. Now the, the tortures are here and the weapons are here. And now the cohorts here. And this is the thing we we're trying to not do. Uh, and Jesus is just so not fighting, surrendering and saying, just let them go. And as a disciple, I'm a little bit relieved, like, thanks for saving my life, but it's bewildering. It's like, we're not, th- we're not, we're not going to fight them. We're not going to resist them. You're not going to call down fire. Like, are, are we done? Like, I know you're protecting me and sending me away, but like, what am I supposed to do now? Well, and they know that he's got all this power at his disposal. Like, right. you're, gonna do, you're, that, you're not going to, you're not going to, like, I don't <laughs> You're not going to just are... obliterate these guys? Like, what right. in the world? Yeah. Yeah, call down the fire, <laughs> right? This is your moment. Right. Take the throne, that right? Be my idea is call down the fire. <laughs> that is so me. <laughs> and and it's cool that John wants us to understand, like, Jesus was doing this to fulfill something he just spoke. Yeah. So now like Jesus's words from the chapter before are, are starting to carry the weight of prophecy fulfilled mm-hmm. of Jesus saying, I didn't lose anyone that the father gave me. And John seeing that is Jesus kept his word. Jesus kept his words. 